We are live. We are live on the Prevail Over Cancer podcast with my partner in crime, uh, Keith Bishop. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. And you? Uh, I'm doing amazing. Uh, every time we uh, get on a conversation, we seem to start talking, talking, <laughs> talking. I know. And I'm like, we got to hit the record button because we probably could have added so much value already prior uh, to this right. whole conversation. So today we're going to be talking about supplements. And it's something uh, I've, I've always been interested in supplements, learning about supplements. When I found out I had cancer, I really dove into it and tried to understand which supplements would give me any form of advantage to prevail over cancer, to fight cancer, to have killed cancer cells. And there's so much information out there, so oh, much information yeah. out there. You are one individual um, with all the books I read. You're one individual that actually gave me um, a bitter insight of of supplements, understanding about supplements. And through the process, I've learned and I keep reading, I keep learning, and I keep trying to educate myself. So we're going to talk about six supplements today, six supplements that I actually take in my um, in my cancer striving life, living without cancer now. And I want to break down the benefits, the studies behind it, what are people going to get out of it and your knowledge right. is going to be grateful and also my experience with them so we could go through them all. So mm -hmm. let's get going. I guess the first one that I really dove into right off the bat, and it's something that I've always kind of played around with, even through shots is turmeric, curcumin, right. and is one that you right off the bat was like, you got to get on it. I was on it already. And, and I really just upped my dose on it. Right. And this is the one I'm taking currently right now. I can see mm -hmm. that right there. But um, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the benefits because there's so much information out there. And right. when you read anything about curcumin, it's, um, it's it talks about the slowing of cancer cells. It talks about helping prevent cancer. It also helps about chemo, radiation, the benefits of taking it with those treatments if you are going through that process. So mm -hmm. let's, let's give me all the information on this. Sure. Yes. And so it's, it is one of my favorite, you know, herbs mm -hmm. and, or herb depends on what part of the world you're from and even in the United States, but, uh, yeah. I'll say an herb. And so, uh, it's, uh, it probably has more research behind it than almost any other herb that I've come across. And so I just double checked this morning and there's almost, well, it's over 7,000, almost 8,000 research journals that are wow. mentioning curcumin and cancer. Now, you know, there's, there are some human studies, not many, same thing with all these herbs. The problem is the herbs, you know, are not a patented type thing. And so there's no money to fund that. And so it's more like a combination of university research, uh, but usually that's funded by the drug companies. And so the drug companies are actually, a lot of these articles are actually, they're combining curcumin with something else to make a drug, yeah. you know, or switching the chemical molecule, creating a new chemical to create a prescription drug. And so that's where a lot of this research is coming in. And so matter of fact, then they compare, okay, so um, in the animal or the test tube, you know, does this new molecule work better than the original one? You know, is it worth, you know, following up with that? And so and it's called, um, oh, uh, micro, you know, um, uh, microbiology, but uh, medicinal chemistry. Uh, the class I hated the worst in pharmacy school, <laughs> and but but taking those chemical molecules and testing them, and so I mean, as a matter of fact, the ones we're talking about today, these five or six items are not a complete list, but they're kind of like my favorites, and 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 they have a little bit more research, and so I run into that issue with dealing with the public, but also with the doctors, meaning you know most of the people that I see, my clients are in treatments. And the doctors say, well, where's the science? What's the science? What's the science? Yeah. And so I have to back that up. And uh, so that's where I'm coming from you know, with this. So curcumin it has probably more research than almost all of them yeah. for many years. Uh, the biggest issue is that uh, turmeric is the, the root, the yeah. source of that. And it's used as a, an herb, as a spice, a cooking spice. It's actually not well absorbed. And so, th therefore, they have to do tricks, they meaning the manufacturers, um, or even some people have to do tricks with that. And so, meaning uh, to increase absorption, they'll add black pepper. Yeah. Uh, by, um, Bioprene is a brand of that by one particular company, but add black pepper to it. And black pepper will actually decrease the, uh, the liver's ability to get rid of the curcumin. 
So it's kind of a good or bad. So actually, so black pepper may, you know, actually, you know, it increases the blood level of the curcumin, but at the same time, it may also have an interaction with other drugs. So we have to be a little bit more careful with a black pepper curcumin product. So I'll talk about curcumin because that's the, the primary active ingredient, but there's other ones, curcuminoids. So there's actually several different ones and, and all of them actually, matter of fact, it's like all the plant products, you know, on earth have anti-cancer benefits. So, uh, so same thing with curcumin, it's not just curcumin, but they're curcuminoids and several ingredients in that. So, and so it, it does help, you know, in science, in the science, in the medical journals, it helps slow down cancer, cancer cell growth. Yeah. Um, it helps cancer cells to actually die and, um, and then helps to, uh, one of my favorite things is actually, it, it even seems to chelate and bind to copper and reduce copper levels. Yeah. Yeah. It takes yeah. copper, you know, so we can eliminate out of the body. There's a lot of in Alzheimer's, uh, research, even a lot about that. So therefore it's one of my favorite things. And then, um, uh, even new blood vessel growth. So, uh, anti-inflammatory inflammation stimulates yeah. cancer cell growth. And so it's like, the list is just like it's benefit it, it's after benefit. Everything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I like that aspect of it as well. I mean, when you are dealing with anything like cancer, you want to eliminate as much as possible, any form of inflammation in your body. And when you're dealing with something like curcumin, it's, I mean, it, the benefits of obviously reducing inflammation in your body, it allows your body's cells to properly fight, defeat, get rid of the cancer cells. So there's other benefits as well like that. Right. Yes. And, and, but also, and you mentioned about, you know, taking it or in like enhanced chemotherapy and radiation effects. Yeah, definitely. And, and most of these items have uh, these herbal things that we're going to talk about do have that kind of effect, except um, there's two ways that they work along that way is most of these herbs are also Matter of fact, herbs are actually more like drugs. Yeah. They're metabolized through the liver and they could interact with other drugs. So it depends on the chemotherapy drug. So one of the ways that they actually can enhance the chemotherapy effect, sad to say, is it could increase the blood levels of the chemotherapy drugs. So, So we have to be a little bit more careful about combining them, not saying that you can't do that. Um, but we have to be more careful, watch for, uh, toxicities, do uh, chemotherapies and liver enzymes going up kidney numbers, you know, uh, showing kidney function is not quite as good. So we have to be just a little bit more careful, you know, while taking herbal products with chemotherapy and radiation officially, you know, we're supposed to say that, you know, you have to notify your doctor that you're taking these things. Uh, most doctors don't know about them. Uh, so it's actually a patient's right to make that decision about what they're going to do, but it does potentially increase the side effect, but there's still even like in not the human system, but even in a test tube, yeah, it, it shows that actually, you know, adding these herbs, including curcumin into a chemotherapy, you know, treatment type program, there's benefits, definitely benefit. Yeah. It looks better. Yeah. And, and it helps all the different methods. Even, work even though I was reading, even during radiation is kind of suppresses the signal of the cells. So it actually helps the benefit of the radiation because the radiation is obviously trying to kill off those bad cells. And this, yeah. this helps the the pathway um, in, 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 in killing those cells. So there's so much benefits to it. I take a thousand milligrams a day. So I split that between two capsules. One, uh, when I break my fast, uh, in the morning, not in the morning, uh, I would say early, early afternoon, around noon, when I break my fast, I take one and then I take one in the evening with dinner. How much should the average person be taking? And it all depends, obviously weight and stuff like that, but just in general. Well, it actually depends on the product. Interesting. And because there's absorption issues. Okay. And so, you know, uh, a cheapy discount store turmeric product is not very strong. A curcumin extract that has black pepper, you know, it could be anywhere uh, from, I think the studies show from maybe 200 to 2000 percent better absorbed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then there's some versions that have oils added to them. So they're actually dissolving it or mixing it in with an oil 
and and that's going to increase absorption some. And then another company that's based in Oklahoma City, they actually add a uh, a, a, a protein to it, and they physically bind a, co- a a protein to it, which makes it more like a drug in a way. And now the body absorbs it because it's more like a a protein. Yeah, yeah. And so that's a, another way. So really, it depends on the product. Yeah, you know, as far as the dose, it's something that we really we don't know for sure, but it but you have to have enough. And so, you know, I I usually go with a minimum of uh, like you mentioned, like a thousand milligrams. You know, if a person's challenged in fighting cancer or trying to prevent it or something like that, it's more like a thousand milligrams at least twice a day. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. And and it depends on what they're doing. You know, if they're taking chemotherapy, I'll go a little bit lower dose and mm-hmm. monitor, help them monitor themselves. Um, but then if they're not on that, I may even push it a little bit higher because it's just not well absorbed. Very good. Very good. Let's jump on our next supplement. And I, I actually asked you prior to pronounce it just for our customer base. It is, I don't know if you can see this with the light here. Yes. But, oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Do you mean to Pronounce it for you? Yeah, pronounce it. <laughs> okay. Cor- you okay. pronounce it corsetin. Did I get that yeah. right? Uh, quercetin. Quercetin. You know, yeah, quercetin. quercetin. So, but my Oki accent, you know, I'm, I'm, people correct me all the time. So, uh, you know, I'm, that's why I pronounce it is quercetin. Yes, quercetin. So there's so much. You actually were the one introducing me to this supplement. I, I, uh-huh. I wasn't aware of it prior to uh-huh. uh, when we met last December. And, it's something that I, I've been regularly taking ever since then. I take one capsule a day. I parted of my breaking my fast supplements. And there's so much research. When you first introduced it to me, I, I dove deep into just learning about it, learning the benefits about it, the 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 benefits on your immune system, benefits on anti-cancer, like just the the cells and there's so much benefits. So let's dive into that and, and why you recommend it to um, most people. Well, it's a similar type of thing. And so it's, um, so this particular product comes from um, like onions. It, it's kind of weird. It's actually in many different foods. Yeah. It really seem to be related, but onions, apples, grapes, you know, are just a few foods, but yeah. they're actually, they're little tiny doses, you know, in those foods. But once again, those foods have hundreds of ingredients in them. And, but by going with higher doses, uh, it does have the same similar type of effects of, you know, slowing down cancer cell growth and um, uh, slowing down blood vessel growth to those cancer cells and, and normal cell death, uh, you know, apoptosis uh, cells are supposed to die in, in a, a natural timing and, and, and not live forever and keep replicating or duplicating. And so it helps with all of those type of things. And it's, uh, it's one that we don't have, it's still not greatly absorbed uh, or very well absorbed, I guess a little bit better way to say that, but it is one that we can, you know, we don't have to take as high of a dose. And matter of fact, it's even one that, you know, uh, you know, a little bit doesn't help. Uh, A moderate amount definitely is great. And a large amount might not be good. It actually may become a little bit more damaging. So it is so it is one that we want to have kind of a, we call it a bell curve. And so, you know, there's this, this optimal level that we want to be at. Uh, so we don't create any damage on it. You know, Expl- Expl- explain damage in ourselves. Well, how would that yes. occur? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like a, uh, kind of like a pro oxidant. So people will do uh, IV vitamin C. Yeah. And so they're going to go with 50,000 milligrams 75,000 milligrams or, or 75 yeah. grams of, of vitamin C at that stage, it becomes a pro oxidant. That means it starts damaging cells. And so, um, uh, oxidation is, uh, browning of a fruit of an yes. apple. Yes. It's going to turn brown to keep it turning brown. We sprinkle lemon juice on it. The lemon juice donates, uh, puts vitamin Acid. C on it, yeah. you know, and that vitamin C donates electrons you know, and repairs those cells and keeps them from turning brown. Well, if we had too much vitamin C to that apple, I don't know what would happen, but maybe it become it dehydrated, damage it. Yeah. Okay. So the same thing with, with IV vitamin C, that treatment is a, you know, to become a pro oxidant to damage fast growing cells. Well, 
Same thing with actually quercetin be, can become a pro-oxidant. And, and so it, it can actually start forcing things onto cells and start damaging the cells or actually like the DNA. That's where we're really kind of concerned about is that it get into the cell and that's going to start damaging the DNA. The DNA now is a little misshaped or starts replicating itself incorrectly. That is a potential concern. Okay. 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 So recommendations. We, you had me, um, when we did talk about this, I was taking, I just take one of these a day. So let me look at what Ashley says. Absorption wise. What is your recommendation for these? Uh, typically, uh, yeah, typically I'll go with like two a day, one twice a day. So I'm doing 500 milligrams a day of this, just one yeah, once a day. So, yeah. And now for, you know, for like a prevention. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So uh, one a day, especially at 500 milligrams, that's a little bit on the higher end of the dose because uh, yeah. most capsules going to be 250 to 500. Yeah. So 500 a day for a, a, a more of a prevention type of a dose, I think is great. The, you know, uh, m maybe even 250 twice a day. For those that are challenged with cancer, uh, there's a new thing that I've started doing is taking it, you know, before I eat. And because it helps decrease the body's ability to use glutamine temporarily. Yeah. So that's a newer little concept that's coming out. When, when, you, when, you, when you say that, and I don't want to dive into it because we could talk about that. That'll be another topic altogether. Yes. Right. But mm -hmm. do you give, so when I break my fast, we talked about this um, because a lot of them are fat soluble supplements. Mm -hmm. I take it with, um, I break my fast with four or five Brazilian nuts. Mm -hmm. And then I take my supplements right away. And then I, I usually, usually give myself about a half an hour break before I actually eat my first meal. So mm -hmm. just to let everything right. absorb. Is that enough time to let it absorb into your body? Oh yes, I think so. And so, you know, it, it takes about, well, to think about digestion, 30 minutes. Yeah. You know, that's what I, that's my digest. mindset with it. Right. So maybe blood levels are, you know, starting to peak at about an hour. Yeah. So the goal would be to take that, um, like, uh, you know, 30 minutes before meal, matter of fact, fat soluble with nuts is perfect. And take, you know, the quercetin, you know, with that, uh, breaking yeah. your fats, I think perfect time with that. So that is kind of a newer type thing. So, uh, but I've started implementing that with my clients, you know, and myself taking that more like, instead of taking it early in the morning for me, I, I'm, I leave the house early in the morning, I'm gone. And, you know, it's kind of weird. I work in a pharmacy. I've got all the supplements there. <laughs> I don't take them there. You know, I take them at home. I'm just so busy usually and just go, 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 go until I basically have lunch at two o'clock. And I just don't take the time. It's it's wrong, but I I should do better. But anyway, uh, so I do take some things early in the morning. And then now I'm, there's a group of things I'm taking like before lunch to help yeah. decrease the glutamine type thing and glucose type thing. Perfect. Perfect. The next supplement I mean, I'm going to put pictures of all these up, but okay. it's green tea extract. It's, yeah. it's a supplement. I never, I never took it in a supplement. Green tea is something, um, as a tea I, I consumed on a regular basis for years and years, um, never on a, on a, a consistent basis. But I mean, if I, if I'm going to have a tea during the day or, or in the evening, usually it would be green tea an organic green tea. I usually would just have a bag and slap it. You again, these are the last this supplement and the last one were the ones that you kind of said, let's introduce this into your system. And I started taking it as a supplement. I take it what same thing once a day. Mm -hmm. There is so much benefits to it. So yes. much benefits to right. it. And it's something, I mean, if you think of green tea, I mean, when you're getting to the even the Asian culture, it's 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 a staple in in their diet. Right. So let's talk about the benefits of it. And when you're talking about it, um, it's, there's so much research on how it slows tumor growth and, and, and the spread and, and the spread of, of the cells and all that stuff. So let's, let's dive into green tea extract and, and, and extract is a, a very important aspect of it as well. Definitely. Uh, extract is very important. So yeah, definitely the, the cup of tea is great. You know, I, I have a tendency to do that. Um, I will do a, a matcha green tea, uh, yeah. which is the just worst tasting. <laughs> you know, it's not very good, but yeah. uh, but it's tea, green tea leaves. 
And so, and it could be maybe four to 10 times stronger than a, a, a tea bag of green tea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, and, and most people have to make more like a latte out of it. Don't yes. Add the, that's, don't my, add the that's, sugar. that's what my wife does with it. Yeah. Don't add the sugar, you know, go with a natural monk yeah. fruit, or stevia type things, you know, you know, to sweeten it, uh, to, uh, instead of sugars. And so, you know, uh, so kind of like in the order of strength is going to be the you know, green tea, uh, matcha. Matter of fact, if those are decaffeinated, you know, you you probably are going to lose a little bit of the EGCG. That's yes. one, one of the ingredients in that. Um, and so um, and so that an extract of a capsule, though, is probably going to be equal to maybe 10 cups of green tea. Yeah. Yeah. And and so. You know, that's powerful. And there are versions that are typically kind of like low amount of caffeine. So some of them may have about 30 milligrams of caffeine in a capsule. And uh, because they kind of purify those, they can actually kind of wash those out naturally. Yeah. And concentrate it for the EGCG. That's the main ingredient we're trying to get at. And and then there's some versions also that are caffeine free because there's definitely some people that have an issue with caffeine metabolism. You know, I can have my cup of coffee at six o'clock, seven o'clock at night. And my friend, you got your ceramic. Yeah, there you go. Okay. (laughs) And so um, I can have a you know cup of coffee at, well, literally I could drink a cup of coffee at eight o'clock and I go to sleep at 10. And so genetically I metabolize that caffeine and I have, you know, some clients that they have a cup of coffee or even a cup of tea at noon and they can't go to sleep at midnight. Yeah. So because genetically their liver has a hard time metabolizing that drug, the, the caffeine. So, but it also has the same type of properties, but it is definitely different than quercetin and curcumin in anti-cancer benefits and inhibiting the you know, growth of cancer cells and the new blood vessels, but it, it's similar type effects, but works in a different way. That, that's also part of our goal is we want to, you know, if we just kind of diversify, hit, exactly. If we just hit yeah. the cancer cells with one thing, some of the, some of those cells are going to adapt. Yeah. hundred percent. Same thing with chemotherapy. Remember that brings up another topic along this line, all of these items. So, um, so chemotherapy, you know, they don't use one drug anymore. When I first started this back in the seventies in pharmacy school, I was, uh, I had an oncology rounds and, and, and so they were doing one chemotherapy drug. Well, they found out that the you know, cancer cells become resistant to that drug. So then they put them on a second drug. I mean, a separate one single drug, they became resistant to that. So then they, oh, well, we get a little bit better outcomes if we do two drugs together. And, but even with that, re, you know, resistance still can, it's called MDR, multi-drug resistant. Once that cancer cell becomes resistant to one or two drugs, it's resistant to everything. They, they take on a whole different, and, you know, and, type of and that's, that's when, that's when you're, you're hitting a scary stage at that point. Exactly. And so, that, so, sorry, sorry, go, go. Yeah. So that's why we want to do several things at once, you know, whether, you know, like, you know, sauna and exercise and sleeping right, you know, and um, uh, eating right and being careful about sugar and being careful about excess uh, glutamine and and taking these supplements. And so the more things that we can kind of do, the better the results are. And now, fact, it's like a holistic aspect of it. You're trying to hit yes, it from exactly. every angle possible. The whole, the whole body, you know, the more things that we can do, the better the results are going to be. And so, um, you know, I've seen people, you know, kind of piddle on things. Uh, that's, I don't, that's, you, know, you all use that word much, piddle. On <laughs> yeah. but anyway, just kind of piddle on things and just kind of halfway do things. You're going to halfway get the results. Yeah, of course. And so I, I tell people, you know, with cancer that, okay, this is your Olympics. You know, this is it. You know, this is the time. You got to buckle up. You got to do this. And, we, you know, we got to eat right. We got to exercise. We got to do all these things, and we got to take several different supplements. If we just do one supplement, rely on one thing, I, I, I just don't feel comfortable with that. No, so your we, body, your body will get immune to it very quickly, right? And, exactly. and especially the cancer cells that are, they, they are going to spread and and get immune to it very, very quickly. So you exactly. want to try to hit it from every angle possible. You want to give yourself every opportunity, every right. opportunity to defeat, prevail. And prevent right and and i i love that aspect because it's just it's so sad to actually hear 
everything you're saying and is something that I preach is is the preventative aspect of it because if people were to do these things on a regular basis, whether it's yeah. sauna, the exercise, the diet, eliminating sugar, trying to focus on controlling your glucose levels, all this stuff, cancer levels would be so low in our society. So it would be amazing. You know, I it could be it could easily be, you know, and and I'm not sure. I would say half as much cancer. I would even say less. And and Maybe. the scary yeah. part is because I mean people still disregard cancer as a metabolic disease and don't mm -hmm. understand right. that environmental consumption of food, how you treat your body. There's so many other aspects of how this happens. And I, and this is another topic we're going to talk about one day that I've been researching a lot and the whole idea of it being hereditary. And I do understand there is some hereditary situations when it comes to cancer, right. but you have to also look at when I look at hereditary if my dad had cancer, it doesn't mean I'm going to have cancer if I change my lifestyle from day one. And, and, and when you look at that, because a lot of people will be like, oh, my mom had cancer, I had cancer. It's because you guys follow the same path, whether it's, exactly. it's your diet, whether it's your environment, your lifestyle. So if you're following the path of somebody that has it, it's going to obviously increase your opportunity to get it. Right. Exactly. So there's a lot of things we could talk about that because that is one thing that, that bothers me when I hear people like, oh, it's hereditary. I'm going to get it no matter what. No, you're not going to get it. There's no. ways of preventing it. So, yeah. So green tea extract is a definite staple. In, in, and I would say prevention, just in people's lifestyle, it's, it's something that she, people should be taking on a regular basis. I agree. Yes, exactly. I yeah. agree with that. And um, the uh, now the matcha tea is actually getting more difficult to find because it's becoming more popular. Yeah. You know, Primarily Japan, yeah. China, and and uh, maybe another country starting to kind of make some. Japan is a, com a country that has probably the best organic type uh, methods, uh, accepted right. methods on that. And so, um, but yeah, the capsules I think are great if you have a family history or you have a personal history of cancer. The other thing about that is going to be the timing of the green tea, uh, caffeine free capsules, and so because of the glutamine thing, kind of like quercetin. Yeah. I think the perfect time for that is actually before you eat uh, a protein serving. So matter of fact, you know, glutamine, you know, is one of the fuels for cancers as yeah. glucose is, but we also have to have proteins. And so our body can actually even take other proteins and make glutamine. Well, quercetin green tea help decrease some of that. Yeah. And it's perfect time to decrease that glutamine for a while is to take the green tea before a meal, 30 minutes, maybe an hour before a meal. Worst case scenario is actually with the meal, the beginning of the meal, because yeah. it's going to be time for those nutrients to be absorbed also anyway. So, so anyway, I love green tea, you know, drinking it is fine. Um, You're getting a lot more benefits out of it with a the lot more benefits out of a capsule, right? Yeah. Okay. The next supplement is our K2. Oh, yeah. K2 mm -hmm. uh, and vitamin D3. And for years, I just took vitamin D3. And that was just something I took on a regular basis. When I did my, um, when I did all my blood work after I found out I had cancer, my vitamin D levels were extremely in a, in a perfect spot. So it wasn't a, a lack of vitamin D, but it's a supplement that you heard a lot of controversy during our whole pandemic where, right. Vitamin D levels are low on most people that are getting sick and being hospitalized with COVID. So mm -hmm. it's such an important supplement, but it's also one that naturally we could get on a regular basis, just right. getting mm -hmm. outside and getting some sunlight, some daylight. It's a little harder in, in places like Canada. So we mm -hmm. get the snow, we get the winters, we get it darker by, with our time change by five o'clock. already pitch dark all night, So we don't get as much daylight. So vitamin D, and uh, and when you combine it with K2 in, there are so much benefits combining with K2 right. because of the mm -hmm. the calcium bonding and all that stuff like that. Let's talk about the benefits of D3, K2 combined towards cancer because there is so much research on this. This is another one that there's a lot of research on, on your immune system, stuff like that. So let's talk about that. Right. And so the matter of fact, uh, we have what are called vitamin D receptors yeah. uh, on our cells. And so this immune cell has a receptor on it and vitamin D attaches to that, uh, to the VDR, vitamin D receptor. 
And now this immune cell is going to work better. Yeah. And so, but now, and this is also part of the, even the COVID type thing. So some of us, as a matter of fact, myself, I've done genetic tests on myself. My vitamin D receptor doesn't even work from both parents. Interesting. Okay. I still take the vitamin D, but I was one of the first ones to get COVID. Even though I was taking vitamin D, my vitamin D level was great. And so, but my immune system is not going to be optimal. Interesting. Interesting. I never and even so, heard that before. Yes. And so, but the same thing. So this vi- lack of a vitamin D receptor is going to be part of that genetic issue for cancer. Yes. And and so I still take the vitamin D um, because there's going to be other benefits. And so there's uh, even vitamin D has an impact on um, muscle. Oh, and yeah. So, so the actually odds are that, that these guys that are kind of like naturally big muscle and big boned into the sports athlete type person, their vitamin D receptors probably work. Interesting. And, and, and odds are some of us like me that are not very big and I had become a musician. I couldn't play football. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, and so, uh, so I became a musician and because my vitamin D receptor doesn't work and, and I can't develop those muscles and the bones, my bones are smaller, you know, than, than, than other people. So, but vitamin D has many different actions. So, and, and actually immune is just one of it. One of them It's yeah. you know, hundreds of actions, maybe a thousand, you know, interactions in the body. And it is a risk factor being low in it is a risk factor for almost every single health issue I can find, but it's not a magic bullet. You know, and so like you mentioned, your vitamin D level was okay. Yeah. And and still you had cancer. So it's not like going to be the answer. But okay? as we talked, it's a combination. Yes, exactly. You want to hit every kind of angle as possible. And something like vitamin D is such a easily found supplement you could find in any health food store, any, any right. pharmacy. And it's something that our body does need it does naturally produce it so if you are in a sun state right. and you're already in the sun all day you probably could naturally get it but as a, like i was saying when you are in mm-hmm. in 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 areas of north america when when the light daylight changes you do want to increase your vitamin d as yes. much as you can especially in the winter time and i do that i i, I bring my vitamin through the summer i i keep it around a thousand usually a thousand icus um, mm-hmm. and then in the winter to, or even sometimes up to 2000 ICUs, it depends on the, on the time of year, but in the winter time, I usually bring that up to three to 4,000 ICUs. And I've been doing that That's steadily. So, yeah. I have to take like 5,000 units, uh, five days a week at least. Yeah. Yeah. I do it every day. I do it every day, yeah. steadily mm-hmm. seven days a week. So yeah. it's, it's, it, there's so much benefit to it. I mean, it's such a supplement that it's a staple in my, in my supplements and it has been for right. years, even prior to. Uh, be diagnosed with cancer. So what are your recommendations? Like you said, um, let's talk about that quickly. Okay. Blood work. How would somebody yes. find out genetically if they are able to absorb it or not? Cause I've never even heard of that before. It's, so it's, yeah. So it's, it's not well absorption. First of all, it's a, it is a, it's not really a vitamin. It's a hormone. Our body makes yes. it. Yeah. Sunshine yeah, yeah. exposure and, yeah, yeah. and so our skin makes it. So it's actually a hormone. It's more closely related to estrogen and testosterone than anything else, but they mislabeled it when they discovered this and back in the 1930s, probably. And so um, the only way we know for sure how much we need is by doing a blood test for it. Uh, We have no idea how much a person needs. And, And I've seen people that actually do not need to take any. And then I have some people that yeah, that have more health challenges like autoimmune issues. And typically some of those people actually need 10,000 units a day. Yeah. So it depends on the person. We have no idea. Once you start taking it, it actually can take anywhere from three and up to six months for a new level to, to occur. So if you make a change on a dose today, it might be six months before you actually get a good idea about your, your vitamin D3 blood level. So all doctor, all doctors can test, all doctors can test it in some of, uh, in most of the States in the United States down here, um, you can actually get a blood test without a doctor's order and not all States. There's a few States that that's not allowed, but uh, blood tests are easy to get for it. 
Yeah. And typically covered by insurance. If not, it can be, if it's paid cash only, it, so long as you don't go through the traditional insurance type thing, it's usually not a terribly expensive no, test. No, I, I, we had to pay for it here. And I think it was like $40. Yeah, yeah, per- exactly. Yeah, it's not expensive. Yeah. And, and so I, I I recommend people test it all the time, but it does take a little bit of time, you know, for that level, that new level after a dosage change to occur. And we do need more in the wintertime. Sunshine exposure in summer can limit that. Um, and, and there are once again, thousands of benefits for it and, and it does uh, help with the immune system. That's part of the, the immune system is part of the anti-cancer effect. hundred percent. hundred percent. We have those cancer cells. We want to damage them, you know, and then it's the immune system's responsibility to grab hold of that and, and chew it up, get rid of it. And so we, we want those immune cells to work right. And, and there's another aspect of that as well. And I always talk about that is you want to keep your immune system as strong as possible. You want to yes. keep your body. And the reason for that is if your body is constantly fighting colds, constantly fighting injuries, constantly fighting inflammation, it's, it's that those are the moments those cancer cells thrive because your body is, it, it doesn't, it, it, you need to keep your body as healthy as you possibly can. So your body mm-hmm. naturally could be defending and fighting those cancer cells on a regular right. basis. Mm-hmm. Right. So one thing that, um, supplement wise and 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 it and kind of i started really diving into is is the benefits of mushrooms and there's so many of them um right. we're going to dive onto two today uh one of them my friend nelson actually um he actually extracts it and takes it up from an actual tree and naturally makes his own tea and he right. a, a very very health conscious guy and he's the one who introduced me to it and then um, I think I asked you about it and I actually started taking it as a supplement mm-hmm. is uh chaga. Am I pronouncing that right? I don't well, I don't know. That that's a Canadian thing. So, you know, we don't have the we don't have bir- isn't it birch trees. Yeah, yeah. We don't yeah, have birch yeah, 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 here, yeah. you know, and and so it's primarily birch trees. Matter of fact, yeah. I go up in the mountains in, in uh, uh New Mexico and Colorado, and I might maybe see some very rarely up yeah, there. They're very yeah. Fact, yeah. As a matter of fact, it's not like I'm going to trust that because it's not <laughs> really birch tree. <clears throat> so you know, we I don't want to eat a mushroom. I don't know what it is, and so uh, so yeah. So uh, uh, chaga, yeah. you know, is um, a, a it is a a fungus, a fungi yes. uh, that's growing on the tree, and yeah. um, and so it's going to take nutrients from the tree that and and that's coming up from the soil and even from the air. And, and that's a very interesting one is that it does have some of these, we call it beta glucan type yeah. things, uh, yeah. you know, in them. And, and so that's one particular chemical structure, actually beta glucan is a chemical structure, but it has those ingredients, but also that color is important. So yeah. it's like foods, the yeah. darker, the foods, they have a tendency to have more antioxidants and polyphenols and, and tannins and other things like that. And so this chaga is you know, actually kind of black on the outside and there are certain nutrients in that outside part and then more orangey on the inside Yeah, and, and different types of nutrients in that. So, and actually, so they've actually studied the outside and the inside and in those different nutrients. And there are some anti-cancer type benefits, immune system uh, polyphenols are, it's a great thing, you know, making the tea, especially, you know, traditionally it's kind of like a, a winter time type thing. I think, you know, in the Northern climates is, you know, uh, making that tea and brewing that tea because you, you can't get as much fruits and vegetables. So, yeah. cause that chaga will keep for a while and it's fairly stable once it's, it's picked, I believe. I, once again, I don't have that access to that. So. Yeah, so what, like, so I, I like I say I do it as a supplement. I mean, it's it I I do the same thing once a day, and the, I mean, when I originally dove into it, and my friend Nelson introduced it to me, I, I really started looking into it, and what really clicked on me is the direct link with colorectal cancer, mm-hmm. and and this one for some reason had more studies of all the mushrooms when it directly linking to colorectal cancer, which is something obviously that I had to uh, deal with, so. When you're looking at it, it, there's there's a lot of studies that show the direct um, correlation with slowing down or stopping tumor growth. Mm-hmm. So, what what are, what is your knowledge about that? And there are actually, you know, 
uh, a few human studies, not many, but there are yeah. some definitely that can show that. Matter of fact, I think there's kind of like 14 studies thus far, you know, and, and, but they're more like population studies. And it's more like uh, the people that take chaga that have cancer have a tendency to live longer. Interesting. Okay. It's kind of a summary type thing. Yeah. yeah. We can find similar type effects with some other mushroom type things. And, and so matter of fact, in the, uh, in the Orient, um, in uh, China and Japan, they have a, uh, a different type of a mushroom that they use and they extract it and even have a prescription mushroom product. And there's thousands of research articles on that. Yeah. And, and, and that is part of, because it actually ramps up the immune system to fight, you know, infections and yeah. help and, and help, uh, even kind of like, uh, to a certain extent fight. Well, so one of the big problems is immune system becomes compromised. Chemotherapy kills fast growing cells, yes. immune cells and white blood cells and red blood cells are some of those faster growing cells. They only live for a few, uh, you know, maybe 30, 60 days. Yeah. And so they have a tendency to be damaged pretty quick with chemotherapy radiation. And so beta glucan seem to kind of help some of that out and help to fight infections. And, and therefore people live longer. Yeah. So often people are going to die of not necessarily the cancer, but maybe pneumonia and other things that can happen too. Or, you know, or, or, or a lot of times the treatment itself is what it gets, gets you before treatment anything itself, else. They can't eat. Yeah. You know, yeah. They're, they're starving and, yeah. and they can't absorb or, yeah. or, or whatever. Yeah. So often they'll die of side effects and, or complications, you know, of that. So, yeah. um, so it's, you know, I, I love the mushroom idea and, uh, matter of fact, I wish that, you know, here, you know, we had more options and, and they're kind of limited. It depends on region. So that's where supplement capsules, you know, are, are a definite way, you know, to do that. And so, um, you know, most of us can't go up to Canada, go to the birch trees and climb up that tree and <laughs> cut that off. <laughs> Your friend maybe he, has access he, to that. He he he's actually an arbiter. So he actually he's up oh. on trees on a regular. He's a firefighter, but he's as a as a side gig business um, cuts down trees. So he's always around. So yeah, that, I mean that's that's how he actually collects his own when he's doing that, doing a lot of his work up in the uh, up right. north areas of of Canada. So uh-huh. so there is a lot of benefit to that. Yes, right, exactly. Mm-hmm. The next one, which is our last one, we're going to talk about today is. Something that I actually read about in uh, the mol- metabolic effects of cancer um, book when I that was the, probably the first book I read when I when I was diagnosed with cancer and it's uh, Turkey Tail mm-hmm. and Turkey Tail. I mean, there is so much research. Even I mean, when you're dealing with a country even like Japan, where they actually use it as one of their uh, therapeutical treatments for cancer. Right. So mm-hmm. let's talk about turkey tail and, and your knowledge of it and, and as a mushroom, another benefit of it. When you heard, when somebody t- first told me when I was reading about a turkey tail, I'm like, turkey tail? I'm like, what do you mean a turkey's tail? And then when I actually researched and I found it was just another mushroom. So let's talk about the benefits of turkey tail and, and how and where we could get it. Like I said, I take it in the supplement form because it's just accessible. It's easy. Um, uh, right. There's only a certain amount of mushrooms you could eat in a day. So having these yes. supplements, it just speeds up the process. And and like I said, we're trying to attack everything from every angle. So any little inch, even I say, if it's going to give you a 0.000% to fight that cancer, then take right. that opportunity. So that's yes. my that was my mindset and something I've really, really honed and, and studied and learned about and really took into effect. So let's talk about turkey tail. Sure. Turkey tail. And so, yes, that kind of the fan of the turkey tail. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, but, but because it's actually got those colors. Yes. Uh, like a turkey tail would have. And, uh, and so matter of fact, you know, that one is actually a little bit more common down here. And so when I go yeah. to New Mexico, yeah. ride horses in the mountains and camp and fish, and, and I've actually yet to pick any, because usually when I go, it's off season for the growth there. And so there is a temperature issue with that. And when I find them, usually they're more 
petrified. <laughs> so yeah. they're they're probably not any good anymore. I can see them see them on the logs and things like that, but they're hard as a rock almost. Yeah. And so, but it's, it's the same kind of thing. Uh, it, you know, a little different. You know, combination of nutrients, but it is. Uh, you know, once again, that that kind of beta glucan type and polyphenols and and those colors. You know, in that. And so that uh, uh, called uh, Versicolor uh, yeah. is kind of another term for that. Uh, Versa are several colors. So there's colors in that. So once again, the darker color of type foods have many benefits, including the, the mushrooms. And so turkey tail too has similar type things. You know, a lot of studies showing benefits to it. It's a pretty easily grown one. And so I'm sure there's a lot of uh, people and companies even that are growing the mushrooms, turkey tail mushrooms you know, so that they can be used, you know, and, you know, in supplements even. So, because you, there's only, it's hard to go out and go find enough turkey tail mushrooms. So yeah, yeah. if you're trying to do that, you know, the, you, you're going to hike a lot of miles, you know, to find that. Because a lot of people are, you know, take, picking, they're so recognizable, people are going to pick them up and, and you're not going to find them. One thing, I, I as you were talking about this, because now we're dealing with farm grown uh, you mm -hmm. do want to make sure, and that's one thing I do is all my supplements. I try to get, right. I try to buy them always organic. So look yes. for organic options, especially when you're dealing with the mushrooms and stuff like that. I try to look for organic options as well. So these are six supplements that should be a staple for anybody. Um, if you're trying to prevent, trying to, mm -hmm. uh, fight or trying to strive can be a, a cancer free life after, um, you've beat right. cancer. Mm -hmm. So you're prevailing over cancer. There is a ton of other supplements, and we're going to dive into other ones throughout the other podcasts. Of these six, if I were to say, you know what, you only got to take one or two, which of these six would you say are the most important? And I think I know what you're going to say, but let's, let's... <laughs> probably so. So, you know, um, yes, because when I send you the list, I have it you know, almost in my mind. That's what, yeah, yeah. Mind. And so you know where I'm yeah, going yeah. with this, but yeah, yeah. So, actually, you know, I, I lean toward curcumin. Yeah. Yeah. It, it has the most research. Yeah. And, and quercetin. Yeah. And, and green, green tea, tea extracts, EGCG. Yeah. Those are my favorite three uh, yeah. that I, you know, if, and, and definitely there's some people that can't afford to take, you know, more than one or two, you know, and, and so, you know, and so we need to concentrate on, on those, you know, those are my favorites. Yes. Yeah. And so if a person had a, a, a financial issue and they wanted to do that i would kind of it'd be curcumin quercetin and egcg yeah now one last thing with uh with turmeric if you do find um if you do have a juicer or cold press do you find the same benefits because we do i do still make my juice shots um i, I don't take them on a regular basis i was eight maybe two three times a week if i feel like i'm coming out with a cold because i feel like it just destroys everything inside me i do a gin is i make it with ginger oh ginger yeah ginger yeah, yeah ginger turmeric and I add black pepper and lemon mm -hmm. All organic I, I it's a cold press juicer we have at home and um once i make them we put it refrigerate it and for example my son's home sick for a couple of days he's having a couple of shots of these a day every time he, he takes a little shot down he runs around the house screaming because it's burning his whole insides out but it, that's it, why he's getting it, well because he didn't want he says he's well because he didn't want to get the treatment anymore <laughs> but it, it it works it works it feels like it just it just it boosts your immune system it gives you a shot of vitamins but it also um helps like you said so many other benefits to it if somebody doesn't take a supplement form are they getting the same amount of benefit through an actual like ginger shot or, or tumor sorry we'll just get back to tumor tumor shot if they add the black pepper and make it at home or do you recommend it better through a supplement would you write to natural or a supplement you would absorb it and you know and the black pepper definitely brings that up a notch yeah so actually the black peppers too i mentioned liver function but the other thing is the uh it actually in Increases the absorption of the curcumin from the intestinal tract. Yeah, yeah, I read so, that too. So, so there's there's two different ways that it's going to work. So the black pepper definitely make a difference. If you don't add the black pepper to it, it definitely won't will not be nearly as well absorbed. And um, the only other thing is that if you could figure out a way to add a little bit of an oil to it, you know that might also increase absorption. What, what oil would you add to it? Like an avocado oil, olive oil? What type of? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of those, yeah. one of those oils exactly. But a little bit of an oil 
you know, and so that's what some supplement companies do is they will, will it, will it mix well? If you do it at home with the juice, it won't mix well because you'll sit on top, right? Oil. Exactly. It will sit on top. So so that I'm not going to give it, give it a shake or something before you take it or add a couple of drops. If you're doing a little shot of it, add a couple of drops and then uh, take it all down, add a little bit of oil to it and and take a shot with that. And so matter of fact, maybe some of our viewers can share, you know, their ideas on, on that oil type thing. And so I don't, cause that, that's not going to mix well either, but the oil in the intestines. Uh, so curcumin, turmeric and curcumin are more oil soluble than water soluble. Yes. And so if you mix those in a, a, a bowl or mortar and pestle, you know, the oil will definitely hold that together better than the water version interesting 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 because i was actually going to make a a video and i'll be doing it soon of um, my uh ginger turmeric black pepper lemon shots Mm -hmm. making them Mm -hmm. so i was going to just do a video soon on that so that might be something we'll do is add a couple drops of either which i have at home that's the only thing we use is either avocado or or uh olive or olive on salads we keep olive oil cold we don't try to heat it up but the only the only one we actually heat up is either grass-fed butter or um, avocado oil. That's so that's the main strip in our house now. That's all we use. So yeah, this has been awesome. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah. every time, every time I sit down with you, um, it's, it's, there's, it's almost information overload, but it's, it's okay. anybody that sits down and, and spends the time to listen to our episodes are getting something out of every episode, which is, that was my goal. That was my goal when we started right. these podcasts. So I appreciate you. I appreciate your knowledge. I mean, you are a bundle of the knowledge. You're like an encyclopedia. So um, this is awesome. I appreciate you. And, uh, and, and like I said, we are going to, for our audience, try to come up. Uh, I've been getting so many emails and messages. Like we put out a couple more episodes on a regular basis. So we're going to try to bring them out every two weeks now instead of once a month. Yep. And, um, right. and we're going to hit different topics. We're going to talk about topics that, uh, myself and Keith have been talking about quite a bit, something that I've been doing steadily. And Keith is also, we're going to talk about saunas. We're going to talk about fasting. We're, there's a lot of things we're going to be diving into and and adding benefits to anybody that's fighting cancer got diagnosed with cancer prevailing over cancer living a cancer-free life or like i said just preventing and living a life that you're hoping you'll never have to deal with cancer and that's obviously should be your main goal from the beginning right mm-hmm. so right. I, and, I, and feel so, better doing it matter of fact one of my clients the other, day, the other day you know she, it's been re- literally just like a week and a half and she said keith i feel so much better and she just started making just a few changes. It's really neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome. I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you.